Hong Kong is set to hold its Legislative Council elections this Sunday, 15 months after the poll was postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The key role of LegCo is to debate the policies, laws and budgets put forward by the government. But so much has changed for the city in the lead up to this vote. Most notably, the overhaul of its political system by China. By making certain that only patriots run the Asian financial hub, candidates are vetted by a powerful committee. The move will see many more Beijing-approved officials in an expanded legislature. Let's look now at the key changes. In the 2016 LegCo election, half of the 70 seats, all geographical constituencies, were directly elected. Candidates campaigned and reached out to voters in their respective constituencies. The other five seats, or the so-called super seats, went to district councillors. The remaining 30 seats went to functional constituencies. These are made up of lawmakers chosen by various professional interest groups, such as the finance, commercial and legal sectors. The 2016 polls saw 40 pro-establishment lawmakers elected, along with 29 pan-Democrats and one independent. Fast forward to 2021. The revamped structure of the Legislative Council has seen seats go up by 20 to 90. Directly elected geographical constituency seats have been slashed to 20 from 35. Now, that's the lowest ratio ever in the city's election history. And this essentially prevents any opposition from forming a one-third veto bloc. There are still 30 functional constituency seats, but those for district councillors have been scrapped. The rest of the 40 seats will be filled by lawmakers selected by the pro-Beijing election committee. The committee also chooses Hong Kong's chief executive. The pan-democrat camp is effectively crippled by the strict vetting process and the reduction of directly elected seats. Even if they are picked as lawmakers, the odds are low that they would be able to make any significant political impact. Uh, even though mainstream opposition parties have decided to sit out Sunday's polls, about a dozen centrist and independent candidates are running to take on the pro-establishment parties. In the first part of a three-part series in the lead-up to these elections, Ronan Lim speaks to two non-establishment candidates. Hi, I'll teach you. Hi. Former public relations executive and current district councillor Adrian Lau is only a dozen or so legislative council candidates that refer to themselves as pro-democracy. 45-year-old Lau is running in the district of New Territories Southwest as an independent, a relative newcomer against two other candidates from the more established parties, the pro-Beijing DAB and the Federation of Trade Unions. Most prominent Democrats are either jailed, remanded in custody, quit politics altogether, or are in self-imposed exile as a result of the national security law. There's a lot of red lines and no one's know it. Uh, I try to, I will try to um, see whether I can, you know, um, get uh, what citizens want and, you know, the red line between it. I will try to, you know, go through it. Lots of citizens uh, sometimes will tell me that um, yeah, uh, they worry about whether you know, I'm safe. But yeah, I, I already prepare myself because you know, I don't have the, you know, personally I don't have the burden and politically I also don't have this burden. He's running on the platform calling for universal suffrage for the chief executive election and the legislature, a promise enshrined in the basic law. However, a political reform proposal by Beijing was rejected by lawmakers in 2015. In light of recent changes to the makeup of the representation in LegCo, any opposition voted in today would lack veto powers. My most important part to join this election is to try to help um, them to voice out what we need. This is the main important thing. Um, because now, you know, the storytelling is totally different um, from the government or from pro-Beijing side. And the citizens' um, real um, heart, what they, what, they, what they want to say in, um, is totally different from what, you know, the, the, the government. So my, I think I, I try to help, you know, to voice out what, what they need.
。但邊個為我哋去爭取民主？邊個改變我哋一件事嘅選舉制度咧？係冇人。Nelson Wong is a former legislator of the Democratic Party and a dark horse in the race for a seat in New Territory's Northeast. The 64-year-old decided to run after the Democratic Party and Association of Democracy and People's Livelihood didn't field any candidates. Wong is opposed to anyone using the national security law as a tool for denunciation. National security is very important, but not like this. Now so many people use uh, national security law become the tools of attack uh, some uh, um, uh, dissidents. So this is not good because it, it will um, um, uh, let all the Hong Kong people afraid the uh, national security law. Um, I think we love the country, we love Hong Kong by heart, not by the national security law. Wong also talks like a Democrat, calling for amnesty for all opposition activists in jail, restarting constitutional reforms towards achieving universal suffrage, and setting up a LegCo panel on police performance. Now for the first time in Hong Kong's election history, there are no candidates being fielded by the established opposition parties. In most of the 10 geographical or directly elected seats, two or three pro-establishment figures are going up against one solitary independent candidate. This trend signifies the limited political space that's allowed under Hong Kong's new political reality. Roland Lim, CNA, Hong Kong. Of more on the election, Professor Ho Lok Sang joins us now. Professor, we just heard our correspondent there. The political space is smaller. As my colleague Dawn pointed out, directly uh, elected seats from 35 now down to 20. And as she also mentioned, screening, vetting much tighter now by a pro-Beijing election committee. Yet officials are saying the voices of opposition will still be heard. How do you figure that one out? Yeah, I think uh, um, all these developments are actually pretty unfortunate, you know, you know, because I, uh, for one, have been hoping that uh, uh, we would have had uh, universal suffrage to elect uh, the chief executive uh, back in 2015, you know, because uh, the, the package put up by the government actually is pretty liberal, you know, because uh, uh, as long as uh, one has got uh, 10% of the uh, nomination from the nominating committee, then he can actually run, you know, for initial run. And of course, uh, after some uh, public debate and so on, eventually the, the nominating committee is going to select uh, two to three candidates for for the popular vote. And and I think that is actually pretty liberal, you know. But uh, uh, unfortunately, um, the the so-called opposition, you know. Uh, this opposition is actually, or, or dissidents, you know, uh, is actually, they, they take a very hostile view of Beijing, you see. And unfortunately, uh, in Beijing's eyes, uh, this is a very unfriendly gesture, you know, because actually, uh, if you do not respect uh, Beijing's uh, uh, rule, if you do not uh, follow strictly, you know, okay, the terms of the basic law, then actually you're opposing uh, uh, the, the status quo, you know, Hong Kong being a uh, special administrative region uh, 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 for uh, in the PRC, so so I think uh, this uh, uh, breach of trust uh, is is undermining you know um, uh, Beijing's trust in the in the uh, election process too you know because uh, there was a, a strategy you know uh, that was invented by Bernard Tai who is now in jail. Okay, to actually uh, kind of uh, topple the legislature and uh, force um, a, a, another election, you know, and uh, force the uh, the stepping down of the chief executive and so on. And it is actually very hostile, and and I think uh, this is a very unfortunate development. And uh, but I want to stress one thing, which is that uh, when you say dissident. Uh, um, it's not uh, uh, someone who do doesn't agree with uh, government policies. Okay, if you disagree with government policies, it's no pro no problem. You you can voice out your 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 disagreement, and, and I don't think it will uh, ever uh, um, uh, um, uh, lead to um, 
uh, prosecution under the national security law. Oh, but prof- if you uh, actually yeah. deviate Pro- from professor- the basic law, Professor and Ho, food, and the mm. yes. Professor Ho, in light of that perceived hostile view, though, the new system aims to ensure only yes. patriots run. So why is this criteria so yeah. crucial for China? Yeah, yeah. Um, you have to understand what is meant by patriot. You know, uh, according to uh, the my understanding, okay, a uh, patriot means someone who is really. Uh, 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 un- understands the, the situation in China, uh, which uh, includes Hong Kong and Taiwan, okay? And uh, as a patriot, you know, you you want to take the national interest at heart. And the national interest, of course, is national in- uh, integrity and uh, uh, territorial integrity and also the the overall development of uh, the Chinese people, so so that people can can live happily and in sp- prosperity, you see. And if you have that in mind, then uh, you would actually uh, endorse uh, uh, um, the the present political system, you know, because under the political system on the mainland, actually, uh, uh, even though it is not a popularly elected government, but it has delivered, you see. And I have been uh, uh, making the point that an effective government is what really constitutes substantive democracy. You know, an effective government that can actually meet the demands, meet the needs of the people, address the concerns and actually help them improve the livelihood. And I think that is really important. And sustainable development too, you see. And I think uh, if you look at China's overall development, you have to agree that uh, 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 the uh, overall development has been, has been very um, uh, uh, good and actually much better than uh, 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 many other uh, so-called uh, democratic countries. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, I, I think China's system is actually uh, uh, very much people-centric, meaning that they do address um, uh, people's concerns and uh, it actually is responsive government. And I would call a responsive government a democracy. Oh, thanks so much for all that, Professor Ho Lok Sang from the Pan Sutong Shanghai Hong Kong Economic Policy Research Institute.